It is a beautiful morning here in Tennessee, and today I am excited because I haven't brought one of these for you all in a while. I haven't done the Look for Less, and today I'm bringing you four fall Look for Less DIYs. Hey there, my name is Yami. I am your Latina next door. Welcome back to Mi Casa. I apologize if the screen is a little dark and I look like I'm in the shadows, but it is morning, the sun is rising, and I am trying to get this video done before the sun is completely in my face. And you might hear my neighbor mowing his hay <laughs> across the street, so I will try to do this as fast as possible. Now, I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to do any more fall DIYs for you all this year, just cause y'all know my situation. But the other day I was in another town and they happened to have a Dollar Tree and a Hobby Lobby nearby where I was running some errands and I thought I'd go in and see what I can find. Cause I had a few ideas in my mind of some things that I had seen online for fall and I was able to grab some supplies up and start creating. But before we start, I wanted to address something that was uh, mentioned by several of you all during my pregnancy announcement video. And I had been thinking about how to approach this because I honestly had never been in this situation before. So I thought I would address it at the end of this video. So if you guys want to know what it's all about, stick to the end and we'll talk about it a little bit more. All right, let's get started with our first look for less dupe. So for the first look for less, I found this Triticum wheat stack on Ballard Designs website and they have two different sizes, one for 20 that's on sale right now and one for a little over $23. Now when I was at Hobby Lobby, I found this grass that had been dried in the dried floral section and it was $7.99 originally, however, it was on sale for 40% off. Now this had quite a bit of grass, so I began to unwrap everything and then start pulling small pieces out. I was determined to make both of the pieces with just this one bundle of dried grass. So I began to pull each stem individually and began to hold them down with my other hand to make a nice tight bundle. Now, once I was done gathering the amount that I needed for the smaller one, I came in with some shears and I cut the stems down. Now, I needed these to stand on their own, so I took the pieces that I cut off, measured them so that they would be a little bit shorter than the entire stems on the arrangement, and began to cut all of the pieces that I cut off down to that size. I was hoping to bulk up the actual base of the arrangement so it had a little bit more uh, girth and it could stand up on its own. Once I was done cutting them all down, I kind of spread the ones that were on the outside, laid the smaller stems on the inside, and then wrapped the rest around so that it would cover those stems that had no tops to them. I held them down with one hand so that they wouldn't come apart and then with the other one I actually used the rubber band from the packaging to hold it together. I trimmed any excess off the bottoms to make everything nice and even. And then there was some loose pieces of I guess the tops of the wheatgrass and so what I did was I hot glued those bottoms of them right on top of some of the pieces that I had cut down and put in the center for that added width. That way you wouldn't see any little sticks from the top of the arrangement either. Now I did feel like it was still in need of a little bit more sticks, so I just kept adding more from the bottom until I was happy with how it felt and how it stood. The originals had a type of jute string around it, but I thought it would be nice to add this green velvet, the one that I used in my Christmas in July video, just so that everything could tie in together. And I just wrapped it around and hot glued it. And that was it for this. 
Now I did want to note that it was just as easy to make the larger arrangement. I used the rest of the wheatgrass in order to make it. I just cut the pieces at a longer length this time. And then I proceeded to do the same steps with adding a more width to the stem so it would hold it up better. This time I didn't have any rubber band, so I just used some baker's twine that I had on hand and made sure to wrap it around several times to hold it. I added the ribbon and here is how both of them turned out. Now as a comparison, the originals, if you bought both of them on sale, would have been $43.20. And since I had the ribbon on hand already, and I only purchased one bundle of wheatgrass, and it was on sale, it only cost me $4.79 to do both. So for the next look for less, we're going to Grandin Road where I found these beautiful Harvest Pumpkin Adore swags. Now each one of these goes for $149. Now I've actually never really done swags before, I usually do wreaths, so I thought I would give this one a try. Now I needed a base for these and I went to Dollar Tree and I found these two football theme little plaques that you can hang up on the wall and I thought that these would be great to adhere all of my pumpkins and my leaves and florals onto. And the fact that they already had the jute at the top to hang was perfect. Now, normally I would come in and paint the fall flannels and football side of this, but since I don't have all of my supplies and I just, I'm working with what I have here, I'm just going to flip them over and use the back side of these in order to work on. For this, I picked up these larger pine cones that were on sale at Hobby Lobby for 40% off, as well as these beautiful velvet pumpkins from Dollar Tree that were $1.25. I love the colors that they have this year. I'm also going to be using these seagrass pumpkins, as well as some of these smaller pumpkins in these little packaging. And as for my leaves, I bought this garland at Hobby Lobby. It was $15.99 originally, but it was on sale for $10. So I would use $5 worth for each swag. And then I have these little picks that I also picked up at Hobby Lobby. Now the first thing I did was begin to add the greenery and I just pulled off the stems or I'm sorry, the leaves from the garland and began to adhere them in little bundles all over the football shape. Then when I started to add the pumpkins, I started with the larger ones. I wanted them to cascade down the entire swag, kind of like the inspiration. So I started at the top and began adding them as I went down. And then I even angled some of them on top of each other so they didn't look really flat on the swag. I did make sure to add a generous amount of hot glue and held them down for a bit of time just to make sure that they were on there secured properly. And then I began to continue adding more greenery and even pine cones throughout the swag. I made sure to cover all of the areas and nooks and crevices with the greenery so that none of the cardboard backing would show. Now you can always use a larger cardboard sign in order to make your swag even longer. However, I wanted the little picks that would just come out the bottom of the original swag as well and this gave it added length. And I had found these picks at Hobby Lobby which my daughter helped cut all of the little stems individually off of it and then I would add it throughout the bottom of the swag to give it even more length. And once I was happy with how everything was filled in and how it all looked, I made two of these for either sides of my door and here is how they turned out.
Okay, so let's see how we did. For the original swags, they were $149 a piece, and if I would have gotten two, they would have cost me $298. However, with all the supplies, including the garland, all the pumpkins, different picks that I used, and pine cones, etc., I only ended up spending a total of $30, and I was able to make two of them. That's a pretty good savings. Okay, so for this next one, I saw these beautiful flickering flameless wax pumpkin candles on Pottery Barn's website. Two of them were going for $79 a piece, and the other one was going for $89. And so I decided to give it a go and I found this beautiful pumpkin at Dollar Tree for only $3 as well as these two other ones for $1.25 a piece. Now if you like these colors you can totally leave them that way however I do plan on painting these to match my inspiration. I found these colors at my local Hobby Lobby for a little over a dollar a piece and I did start off with these but I did end up mixing a little bit of that prairie sage with my green. This is the one that I used for my color block ornaments in my Christmas in July video. As you can see it's going to come out a little bit darker at first and I kind of wanted to lighten it up a little bit and that sage color really did help after I mixed it. Now the change might seem pretty slight and not that different, but it did give it a little bit more of a softer tone of green instead of it being so harsh. Now I always start painting anything like this from the bottom up. I did, as you can see, take out the stems and I had these upside down at first. I like to do this because if any of the paint messes up after I paint it, at least it's on the bottom of the pumpkin and not the top. So always start painting from the bottom upwards. Once I was done with the green, I hopped on over to the orange and then I began to do the same thing with the one that I wanted to turn into a soft cream color. Now the other ones only really needed one coat because they were very similar colors. This one needed a couple of coats because I was going much lighter. Now once they were completely dry, I flipped them over and began to paint them on the top side. Now here I did something a little different because I wanted to add that velvety texture that you can see from the other pumpkins in the original inspiration. So I thought I would try adding flour on top of the paint while it was still dry to get that soft velvety texture. Now I'm going to go ahead and say this right now. My green one did not turn out as good as the other two. And I believe the reason why was because I was working with a larger surface area. So the paint would dry up in patches before I can really get any flour on it. So it wasn't as smooth as some of the smaller ones that I had less surface area, like this little orange one. It seemed like because it was the smaller pumpkin, I was able to apply the flower immediately after I painted it and it was still quite wet. And you're gonna see the difference between these two and how nice and velvety this one turned out compared to a little bit of the patchiness in the large green one. Now, once I knew everything was nice and dry, I came in with a dry brush and began to brush off the excess flour from all of the pumpkins. Now, to be sure that none of the flour continues to fall off, you can always spray it with like a clear matte spray or even some hairspray to kind of hold it in place. Now I didn't have any of those on hand when I created these and while sometimes when you place them on something you can see a little bit of flower fall off, honestly I was quite impressed with how much it stuck since I made sure that when I applied the flower the paint was still wet so it adhered pretty well. Once I was done, I took these tea light candles that are battery operated from a Dollar Tree. Of course, you can use any kind that you want. And I decided to use these for my little flameless candles for this DIY. Now I had first tried doing this with some scissors and it was a little messy and I wasn't liking the results and they were taking too long. <laughs> so I went into Nelson's stash and found these circular little saws that he uses to drill holes into wood <laughs> and it worked a lot better 
I was able to get one that was pretty much the exact same size as these tea light candles and I would just drill in and make the hole for each one. And lo and behold, they fit inside perfectly. So I use the same technique for the white one as well as the small orange one. Now I did kind of mess up the white one a little bit, but it's okay. Normally I would have tried to fix it with something in my craft room, but I don't have a craft room, so <laughs> there you go. That was pretty much it for these DIYs, and I really love how these turned out. Tell me what you think. All right, so here's how we did for the original three candles. If I would have purchased all three of them, they would have ended up costing me $247 versus my dupes, which only cost me 10. That's including the paint, the candles, and the pumpkins. And they were a lot of fun to do. All right, so for the final look for last, I decided to to this countryside harvest arrangement that I found on Grandin Road for $129. Now I'm a sucker for a good arrangement and I saw this one, however, it looked just a little bit too springy for me. It didn't look as fall. So I decided to take the colors that I used for my swags and apply it here and show you guys how easy something like this is to make. So the first thing you're going to need is a styrofoam form like this one right here. And of course, picks of your choosing. Now I had two of these picks and I only ended up using one. I did end up using this pretty pumpkin one. And I also only used one of the second picks as well. Now for the border around the base of my arrangement, I decided to use a popsicle sticks because they were the easiest thing for me to find and I just wanted it to be as simple as possible because many of you might have these on hand. Now you can do these with dowels and I have done this before or you can also do this with book pages where you roll them up and use them as a border and I have done this as well. Now, if you're feeling a little bit more rustic, you can use these craft sticks in the Christmas section over at Hobby Lobby right now. Of course, you can always use some from your yard. Now, as you can see, I am cutting the bottoms of these popsicles flat because I didn't want it to look like popsicle sticks. Now, the foliage will cover the rounded top, so you don't have to worry about that there. And I tried to get them as close as possible to each other as I worked my way all around. Next, it was time to start filling in the inside. And I had some leaves left over from the garland that I didn't use when I created those swags. So I decided to use some of those as well. And as you can see, I'm kind of draping them over the top so that you don't see the border of the vase at all. I began to add the picks of where I wanted them to, as well as some leftover pieces from the swags that I had on hand also. I thought the arrangement might have required more picks, but actually one of each of the picks that I had had was going to work just fine. And as you can see, everything was super simple to add on. I would turn it around and try to make sure that I filled in any gaps that you can see around the back of the arrangement. Again, using leftover leaves so that I can cover any exposed spots as well as the top border. Lastly, I wanted to tie it in with my other decorations. I chose not to paint or stain any of the popsicle sticks and just leave them as be, but I did use some of the ribbon that I had been using, especially for those wheat grass bundles that I did earlier to kind of have everything go together. And this is how it turned out.
So for the final say on this look for less, I know this doesn't look exactly like the inspiration piece, but again, I wanted to use my colors and I wanted it to look a little bit more fall. For the original, it cost $129 for this arrangement, but I only ended up spending $12 to get the look for less. Well, that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments below which one of these dupes was your favorite. Also, we have several updates for the YouTube studio slash tiny home since our last update. So make sure to stick around because I have several videos coming up very soon. So this is going to be a little weird for me because it's just going to be a little weird for me. When I shared our announcement of us being pregnant unexpectedly here on the farm for the fourth time and my husband and I sat down and shared our story with you all and kind of how it all came about and how it affects like all our plans for the farm and what we plan on doing for the next, you know, year or so. So, um, I had, uh, several of you all and I'll put some of these up here on the screen so you know that I'm not making this up, but several of you asked if I had like an online baby registry, if, you know, um, I had an address where you guys can send gifts or, and, and I just thought that was like really, really sweet. One of y'all asked a really sweet question. Like, how do we like conduct an online like baby shower or something like that? Um, and so I've gotten again, requests in my DMS of, you know, Hey, can we send you something? Which I think is just the sweetest thing. Like just, just being asked that is really nice. Um, uh, so I don't know. I, I wanted to bounce off a few ideas from you guys. If you all want to do that, no pressure. I'm not asking for anything. Um, but our situation right now is as of filming this video, I am nine weeks away and we have so much to go still in the tiny home. So I'm a little nervous. I'm not going to lie. And we don't have anything. Like I haven't purchased a single thing for the baby as of yet, just because I have nowhere to put it. And we don't really have anything because my youngest is eight years old. And you know, this was a surprise for us. So we're starting from like ground zero, absolutely nothing. But because I had been reached out to several times, I thought, okay, maybe I can just put a little list together online of everything that I do kind of need at this point. And if and I'll just put it out there. And if anybody wants to pick anything from there, hey, no pressure. You don't have to send anything, I promise. Um, but then I kind of thought about that comment of the online baby shower. And I thought maybe if you guys are okay with it, if you guys are up to it, if you guys want to do it, I don't know. I'm just, but perhaps if you're interested, Nelson and I can always maybe do a live video and where we can interact and talk to you guys. And then we can open any presents that we do receive for the baby. Um, and then that would be kind of like an online baby shower if you guys are interested. I don't know. Um, so let me know. Is that weird? I, I don't know. I'm just, again, you can see that this makes me a little uncomfortable because I never ask anything from anyone. Um, but again, I wasn't the one who brought this up. Okay, so just bear with me. But I thought, okay, if several people are interested, we could do like a live uh, video with you all where we sit down and open up the gifts that we receive and we can, you know, chat with you guys like we have in the past and, you know, we can set up date and time. Of course, the really scary thing about this is, is that if it, if it gets all planned and I get like no gifts, like, okay, that would be really embarrassing, which is a reason why I'm like so hesitant and scared to even talk about this. Cause what if that does happen? Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, but anyways, um, so yeah, I do have a baby list registry and I decided to go with baby list because you can pick from different stores and just go to one list and you can buy from that one list. And so we put like the basic necessities in there, but then there's also like bigger ticket items that I wouldn't want anybody to worry about. It's just that I figured if I'm going to have a list somewhere, I might as well put everything that I need in there so that when we go and finally get the stuff ourselves that we need, it's all in one place. So that's why those are there. 
But yeah, so I will have that link in the description box below as well if you guys want to check it out. I have kept everything like as gender neutral as possible um, because I'd like to wait to announce what we're having when we finally have the baby. Um, so everything is, is pretty, you know, gender neutral on the list. And it's kind of hard to do that sometimes with some of these items, to be honest with you. <laughs> but I did my best. And I'll also have the address where you can send the items to. And again, with nine weeks, um, if I get enough response, if I get enough, like, you know, comments or even emails, if you guys are interested in doing it, you can email me at the Latina next door at gmail.com. Um, then maybe we can get some kind of head count and maybe we can do a fun little online, you know, baby shower, uh, gift, uh, you know, opening or something for you all. So <laughs> I'm sorry if I'm rambling a lot. I just, I just think again, it's just really sweet that y'all have asked and it took me a while to just accept it and be like, okay, well maybe I could put something together. If I get something, it's fine. If I don't, that's okay too. Um, but just let me know what you guys think. If you guys would be willing to like show up, like maybe like on a Sunday evening, um, we'll sit down, we'll put everything together and we'll just kind of open things up and we'll give you guys a shout out and, and we'll, you know, we, nothing is too small. Okay. Nothing is too small. So anyways, that's all I wanted to say. I appreciate the love. I appreciate all of the prayers and all of the well wishes that we have gotten ever since that video came out. We're excited. We are down to the wire. It's nine weeks left. I'm a little nervous because there's so many things we still have yet to do. We've gotten behind on a few items and I feel like we're going to be scrambling for these next several weeks. So I really hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you guys in the next one very soon. Until then, adios.